Tonight on Central Mass Chronicles, uh, as always, we're going to be talking about local issues with our panel. We talk about state issues and we talk about some national issues and we always come at it with a central mass point of view. And that's where we're going to begin tonight. And we're going to begin with Walter Crockett. Uh, Randy Feldman is also here, Roberta Schaefer. But Walter, I want to begin with you because this is making a lot of news. This is not a, a new idea, but Andrew Yang is running for the Democratic nomination for president. He's a businessman. He has this idea about the universal basic income. Kamala Harris has something that's a little bit similar as well, but Andrew Yang would like to give us each on this panel a thousand dollars, and everybody in America as no, well. No, I don't think we'd qualify. At this we would. Point. We would make too much. No, no. His plan will give it to everybody. Oh, right. I think yeah, he's the only he's people who doesn't give with, it to yeah. is the people on welfare. There's a there's a they few have to choose people between that their benefits and his plan. Right. There's a few people that that, that would not qualify, but. Maybe For the Tom, sake of this conversation, Sire, universal Sire, basic point. income. Walter, should we all get $1,000? Will it stimulate the economy? Will it eradicate uh, abject poverty? Will it do good things for American society? That's $1,000 a month. $1,000 a and month. And of course we should all get $1,000 a month. However, no, it won't do a thing. It's a drop in the bucket and it's uh, the, the, the flip side of it is he puts a value added tax on every single thing that you purchase. And so the lives, I mean, it has nothing to do with our existing problems. I could go into length as to what it would do to the actual you, poor, but that's not the Would that's you be more point. for it if it was like $30,000 a year? When you no, say I, I wouldn't be for anything okay. at this point that, that doesn't put climate change as the very first priority for spending our money and, and deciding what, how much money we need. Uh, giving people incomes is not the, I mean, we should treat people well and we should, they should not starve and die in the streets, but, but, but if we don't do something about climate change, which w is monumental and monumentally expensive within the, in the next 10 years, uh, that's it. Mm. Roberta, you know? should we have a floor, this $1,000 no, a month? And no, no. First of all, I want to be on record saying that I totally disagree <laughs> with Walter's priorities about how the money should be spent, but, uh, you know, if we had such money. Uh, but uh, this, you mentioned that this is not a new idea. Does anybody remember the dime experiments? I think that we're all uh, old enough to. Uh, this I don't, was I don't think okay. I do. This was in the uh, early 70s that people in um, uh, Seattle, Washington, were given um, a basic income. I don't know how much it was, but you know it was somewhere in in the range that we're talking about now. And then it spread to Denver. And uh, one of the findings was, they stopped it after two years, because one of the findings that they, that what they found was that it led to the dissolution of marriages, because now women had a source of income on their own, and they said, you know, bye, uh, I, can, I can be independent. Major, I don't but this is you. only, I mean, it's $1,000 yeah, a month. We're not going to live on $12,000. Well, is that you know, bad? They should have uh, stayed in a, a marriage yeah. that they didn't that like? Hey, 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 listen, <laughs> listen, if, so. that's the, if that's the finding, is that good? Um, you know, that, that uh, you know, we know f this has been proven over the years, all the theory, all the experiments, that children do better in a two-parent family than in yeah, a even, even when their parents hate each other. Now, and come on. Even yeah. when yeah. they're that's poor. Listen, listen, the girls do better? Do the girls so far, do better? global okay. warming and the listen. dissolution of the uh, well, nuclear American family out of no, $1,000 a month me, basic income. Excuse me, but this was one of the findings. So also, I read the comments on the article about uh, Yang, and everyone who commented said this was a terrible idea because people, it leads to dependence, people will be less inclined to go out and look for a job. Which is and the so, opposite, of course, so, of what he argues. His feeling is, is that if you have this, it takes some of this pressure off you, you will well, go out and there will be this what entrepreneurship. Did she, what did she say, what did she say, what the woman said she spent it on, a, a new cell phone and something else well, that was frivolous. Well, I will say that there is you a... You know, what do you this, think people are going to do with it? There I mean, is this experiment. we have someone who still minds the poor all the time. I mean, that's ridiculous. What about the people who, who are going to get $1,000 a month who are billionaires? I mean, well, that's I mean, ridiculous. Uh, of course, of it course, is. it's Thank ridiculous. You. Maybe, maybe Tom Steyer is excluded from this. Well, this, this part, Randy, but I think it, it is more interesting to me. If if you get the thousand dollars a month, what are you going to spend it on? And there was it, this experiment is going on right now in Stockton, California. Right. People are being given five hundred dollars a month. I do think that it is unfortunate that you ask the woman, "What are you spending it on?" I get to have a bigger bag of chips. I don't know if that's what you want to be your sort of pull quote for this. 
But is that what we would do? Is that just human nature? We have a, a $1,000 and it's supposed to free us, it's supposed to liberate us so we can go out and do great things, but we're going to buy a bigger bag of chips. Yes. <laughs> yes, it will free us, or no, yes, we're going to buy a bigger bag of yes, chips? Yes, it's a terrible idea, idea. we're okay. going to buy a bigger bag, bag of chips. chips. Yeah. Like, it's such a terrible idea, right? I mean, you know, the earned income tax credit tries to do that if you're a working person, but you don't have enough money, you have dependent children, so we're going to help you out to reward you for your good works. That makes sense. The earned income tax credit makes sense, right? Um, job training, more money for job training, you know, your career fell apart or you didn't like school when you were younger, but you want to you have some training going forward, that would make a lot of sense, right? There's a million things that would make a lot of sense, much more sense than giving somebody a thousand dollars a month to spend however they want. Although I'll tell you, it's interesting, during the stimulus package, when everybody got that, I think it was a $750 check or something like mm, that yeah. from the stimulus, and most of the people I know who were needy, and I said, so what did you do with your money? And they mostly said, I paid back people who I borrowed money from. Yeah, That's what I did with some, my money. Some, some bills. I mean, yeah. it, it really is supposed to be this, well, this that, floor. That's, that, that stimulus was a trillion dollars down the drain. Yeah. We know that there were no shovel-ready uh, you know, program, um, projects to get started, and it was well, a joke. That was let's terrible. Just, I mean, that, the whole stimulus package is a different uh, entity to talk about, but the part where you just give someone cash and hope that they're going to invest it in a way or spend it in a way that adds greater productivity and wealth to them and our society is ludicrous. I'm not, I'm they're not, not going to make sure. the best why, choice. Why, why, why do we, we, I mean, all your comments, I mean, I hate to say, are, are focused on how the people who don't have much money should spend the moral the moral standing of the people who don't have much money who waste their money now what if they spend it on a, a nice fancy sports car would that be okay no i mean what if what if they were you no. and you spend it on that if that would be made, okay right if they made it themselves buy extra money right you know, if, spend it on if they made so it why, themselves why are we focusing on, on those people in the first place i mean is is is, is our entire economy based on um, penalizing people who, at the bottom we're who want a big bag of chips them. we he, have the, we the, have well, they have so many programs for them we're not penalizing them at all they have my, so many programs my, that, our taxes. that's why the the, the one the, the point, 0.1% have Huge our amounts taxes, of money, and everybody else, including the, the us, uh, has our less than we used to have going, 15 years ago. Are being redistributed to those people who don't have enough to live our on. Our taxes are being redistributed to those people who have too they much to not. live on, they and they not. have been redistributed. How, how could how the could, entire the entire focus of conservative pundits uh, over the last 45 years has been on taking money away from the middle class and squeezing it and giving it to the rich. That's okay. what's happened, and Trump has just Walter, pushed that forward. What if we did true. in Worcester what they're doing in Stockton? What if you have, a, whatever the median average income in, in Worcester is, it's, you know, I don't know, $40,000, let's say, and I pick 500 people under that $40,000 in Worcester, and I give them $500 a month. What do you? I mean, what do you think that experiment would show in Worcester? Would it? So you're saying? So all of you agree that it wouldn't well, I, actually I don't do think any it's good. A, it makes a structural change. That's the first thing. You're right. Some people, people who are living in in uh, in in states of of non-success, let's say, they're not living orderly lives. Are not going to live orderly lives because they get another five thousand dollars. Just isn't going to happen. But but the biggest thing is that that at this point we need some structural changes in order to cope with with the things that are coming, the largest being climate change. And I personally am not willing to cast aside my grandchildren on the altar of unfettered capitalism. I think we got to do something about it it's before we all die. I guess, I guess <laughs> one of the, How many years? 10 you years, 12 know, years? You agree with AOC at 12 years? No, I don't. It's, it has nothing to do with AOC. The latest scientific studies say yeah. around 2030. You know, 2031. Do you, do, 2030, okay. Do you realize that there are hundreds of scientists who disagree with that? No. That's, there are. No. I just read an article about it. They're on I'm a sure list. You did. Yes, they're on a list that, that you can access that all the scientists who disagree with the current predictions. Okay. So, so th this was right. not about climate change though. We right, should right. not be coming up, here's what we're gonna do, Randy. <laughs> I'm gonna give you I'm gonna give you thirty seconds, but but coming up, I'm I'm gonna ask you about if we're pricing people out of Worcester. Now I doubt that we'll actually talk about that, you understand, <laughs> but that's what I'm gonna that's what I'm gonna ask you coming up. What but I'll give you thirty okay. seconds to, to so, have the last word. So here. so the, the you know, Walter, you asked me a question. It was a really interesting question. Yeah. So if you spent your money on a fancy car, would that be okay, right? And I'm going to talk structurally and personally, right? Yeah. 
The most important thing I did with my money and I, that I'm proudest of mm -hmm. is my children's education. Nothing mattered more to me than right. spending money on my children's education. And when I'm finished spending all the money and when our society's finished spending as much money as we need on education, then we can talk about other things. But that's the only thing that really counts for having a good society is an educated populace and our that. personal children that. that we're responsible for result, being educated. Right. All right, and, we got and, some agreement there. Central yeah. Mass Chronicles rolls on much more to come. Local news from Central Massachusetts for Central Massachusetts. Worcester police are asking for the public's help as they investigate a shooting. A porch fire in Worcester displaces eight residents. Towns are reaping the benefits of the state's growing marijuana business. It was a warmer day in the city Tuesday and temperatures are only expected to rise. Reporters in the field and an in-depth local forecast. Worcester News Tonight on Charter TV3. Calling all kids. The Teddy Bear Clinic is back. Bring your parents and your favorite stuffed toy to UMass Memorial Children's Medical Center on Lake Avon, Worcester for the Teddy Bear Clinic on Saturday, September 21st from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. Thank you, Mom. Step aboard a fire truck, check out a police cruiser, and visit dozens of interactive booths at this free health and safety fair. Don't miss the fun. Because learning about health is a very good idea. You can't get Worcester weather from a Boston TV station. The sun could be shining in downtown Boston, but the weather could be very different here in Worcester. People tell me all the time how much they count on our weather forecast, and we know how important that is to our Worcester News Tonight viewers. Each weekday, we'll give you your weather, your 10-day forecast for right here in Worcester, only on Worcester News Tonight. Worcester's only local forecast, weeknights on Worcester News Tonight. Central Mass Chronicles, I'm going to turn to Randy Feldman. 145 Front Street uh, is what was billed as the luxury apartments. And there were a lot of naysayers who said, you know what, Worcester, those rents are too high. There's no way you will ever rent those out. Randy, apparently they're rented out at 145 Front Street. Now, it's, it's sort of interesting. So first you sort of had people who were like, oh, you'll never rent those out. That's not, that, that's not worth Worcester. Ah, oh, Ruth. Ruth's Chris Steakhouse is going to come to Worcester. Oh, that'll never succeed. Now that these places are coming, now that you have 145 Front Street, it's interesting that there's a whole group of people who are saying, holy cow, everybody's coming in and they're paying all these big rents. People who live in Worcester, people who work in Worcester aren't going to be able to afford Worcester. Concern? Yeah. Um, you know, the issue is they are full. They just got full. You know, other than other than three months ago, other than February, they were giving away two free months rent. In February, they were giving out one free months rent, 145 Front Street, and it was only this summer where they stopped giving out free months rent, any free months rent because they got hmm. rented. The edge was at that 82% uh, full, and then Holy Cross allowed in more students than they had rooming for, so they sent, they took like 162 beds at the edge. So now we have full, but we have full under particular circumstances because the other there's other employers, big ho, uh, big um, apartment owning bu buildings who try to increase their rent after making a significant uh, financial commitment. People who went first on this whole thing, they tried to get higher rents. As soon as they tried to get higher rents, they started to empty out. So they had to lower the rent again and go back to the equivalent of giving away two free months and then one free month. So I think Worcester's in a situation when it comes to affordable housing versus market rate and market rate, how much can people afford? Just because 145 Front Street is full doesn't mean that the next one, that the Alan Fletcher project, that, that the other projects, that the Polar Park project, Madison Properties, or that half the Trinity rental that is not for affordable but market is going to fill up because I still think that in Worcester if your average person who's single is making about fifty thousand dollars a year I think that's what the statistics say then you're probably going to pay no more than a thousand five hundred dollars a month in rent and anything over a thousand five hundred you're simply going to refuse to pay so which means that those high priced properties are probably going to not get all the money they needed to pay back their investment. I think we're talking about people who don't want to, you know, that you're pricing people out who are paying eight, nine hundred dollars in rent. The market will go into effect. First of all, in the last few years, I wrote about this in the last column, 
we put up in the last five years 1,700 and some more than that of affordable housing in the last five years. Market rate was half that, 800 something, okay? And now the market rate has filled up and it's not that we're not building affordable housing. So if that's, if what you say is true, then, and they can't fill up, then the rents will go down. And those that are market rate that can't be uh, bought will drop their rents so that people can afford them. So it's not that the person who says, I can't pay more than 1500 is out of luck because we do have one of the things that we read about was uh, this RCAP Solutions, which is one of the agencies that helps people, low-income people, find the appropriate housing. So I don't, the developers, it's up to the developers. If they think that there's a market here for that kind of rental, and apparently 145 front, the guys were right that even though it took a while, it was yeah, there. Yeah, but you know what part of it is, Walter, too, is that there is the way that they market it, of course, is they don't market it to somebody who's living in Worcester, working in, in Worcester, getting up and going to their job. They market it to, hey, you can't afford to live in Boston. You got a really good paying job in Boston. Hop on the train, come out, make Worcester a bedroom community of Boston. And isn't that a fear? That, that, that is a, it should be a fear. I mean, there is a huge thing Why? to overcome. We want outsiders. We want immigrants. Why shouldn't we want people from the Boston area? Well, well I don't think that we're that we're saying you don't yeah. want them. No, right. but, but you're if saying you isn't that a bedroom, problem? Sure. Not, why is it a problem what, what, to increase what, the population? No, of well, well not if not, but not, but not right, I, Walter. I, well, here's yes, my thing, but you. not if we don't have businesses that are coming in. We can't do. We can't have the well, resurgence be all restaurants. And I want to hear from Walter on that. But we can't have it be all restaurants. We can't have it all be. Uh, but that's the housing the, that's we need it to be. Yeah. That's for the market to determine. Yeah. Um, uh, uh, yes. You can't force we, company, no, well, companies can aren't help. coming here. You know why? By getting and that's our next ready topic. sites. And that's our next topic because we have a dual tax rate. Were you asking right. me a question? I was. <laughs> Go ahead. Uh, yeah, the, 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 the thing with Boston. Uh, which will also, of course, happen during climate change, is that people are going to come here. People should <coughs> logically move here in any case. You know, it's much, much cheaper, and we have all benefited as homeowners, those of us who own homes out here, from the fact that it costs half as much as if you live closer right. to Boston. I mean, that, that's, that's wealth, money in our pockets. The, uh, and so people should move here, but there's a huge, you know, people on the east of 495 and particularly 128 think Worcester is somewhere out in Pittsfield and and it, there's a huge and they drive through Worcester and it doesn't look very appealing uh, so they they don't realize but if they were to come here I don't agree that it won't be a problem if there's a, a flood as there should be just on the economic base then that's going to mean that, that a lot of people get priced out of housing because the rental will go up. And as that article you pointed out to from the agency said, the rents are not going down for, for people uh, who, are, who are looking for lower income housing. They're going up, 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 and there's, and there's very little of it. And that will continue to happen and we'll have a problem. We already have a problem with lots of homeless people and, and, and we have no solution for that. So I, I don't say that's not a problem. I, I have nothing against people buying market rate uh, properties in Worcester. I think it's good. I think we need a mix of people who have a lot of money, people who have good money, people who have some money, and people who have none at all. That's the community. That's I do think that for a long time market rate was ignored in the city of, uh, of Worcester. Absolutely. Um, and now that people see that there is a market, good for us because you need the, the people who are paying market rate to be able to support the tax base for all the services that we want to provide for people who don't have as much. So do we fear gentrification too much? Um, yes, we fear gentrification too much. We will not get people from Boston in my eyes. You'll get people from Boston who want to live in the suburbs, who want to raise children, and it's a lot cheaper than doing it in Sudbury on oh, in. I think there's but an urban... You, you, I don't think so because the train cost, the monthly train is $450 a month. 
That's how much it costs for a monthly like, pass, yeah. right? Yeah. You add that to the three hours of travel time it's going to take you to go, what under 35-year-old person who's single is going to spend $450, $450 a month and three hours a day coming from Worcester? What but, isn't that, instead, but isn't that part of the marketing plan? Isn't that why we have the, the brew garden and, and the activities no, downtown and we invested yeah, in downtown? Yeah, yes, it's well, it, private investors invested downtown, right? We set up a, a, a platform, but they did it. What we're going to get more likely is people who like work in Mars Marlboro that want to live a single life in Worcester who work in Marlboro, you'll get that kind of person. The question is, do we need a more affordable housing or do you need more poor people's housing? Right, because they're different, right? Affordable, first page of the, uh, of the Chamber of Commerce newspaper this week, uh, this month said, affordable has a stigma that's not appropriate, right? Workforce development and affordable just means a lower cost housing. It doesn't mean poorer people. What's really left out is, are the poorer people having, a, uh, I'm sorry, have a, is there enough for working class people who don't have high incomes to get an apartment in Worcester and is that too expensive? And I think they're just hanging on. They're not doing well, but they're hanging on. And I don't think that the higher rents of all this market rate is going to happen. So I think some of those will drop and they'll be able to get those things. And But do we need poor people housing, right? Do we need more of what Greybrook Valley was? Because poor people just can't find a place in the city of Worcester anymore to live. And I don't know the answer to that. But only because I have a prejudice against building that housing. But that's a prejudice I have, and I don't know if my prejudice is right or incorrect. Well, well I mean, there, there's a certain percentage it, that it has to be. We have to move on, but if that's what you, if your next question is what you would do <laughs> as a city councilor or a school committee member. So if you want to keep tackling this, go ahead. Or you can come up with something else, but we're going to do it next. Andy was signed in 2000. Strong announcing voice, good work ethic, and we throw a live hit at him every now and again, but he and the front office know who the real franchise sports anchor is around here. That's good. Are you sure? I try to be a mentor to him, show him the ropes, help him develop. Should it be this high? But every now and then, I need to think about job security. Academy 82, moving on. General Sal's chicken and Szechuan orange flavored. What, what happened to my script? Kid certainly has a bright future here. Did he mention I'm also the news director? Elizabeth Warren talks about the 1%. She is the 1%. Now, if you really are so concerned about the little guy and the average guy and the middle income person, where are you? Too bad that our own congressman, Jim McGovern, doesn't have the fortitude to stand up and speak on behalf of the people in his community. They all go to Congress with no money in their pocket, and they all leave there as millionaires. How does that happen? Jim McGovern has been in Washington, D.C. for so long that if you put him in a car and asked him to drive through Kelly Square, he couldn't do it. Who couldn't love a community that expects you to pull over and wipe your feet before you cross the town line? I just was in the mood for the Three Stooges and they weren't on, but you know what? It was lucky I came across the Worcester City Council meeting. It was great. I actually had more fun. All right, let's uh, let's go to Roberta Schaefer. And Roberta, you get to be uh, city councilor. You get to be school committee member. I don't know. I'm kind of thinking maybe I should just make you guys like supreme dictators for this <laughs> question. Uh, but yes, yeah, so, so you're a city councilor or you're a school committee member. What are you tackling in the city of Worcester? Okay, the most pressing problem to me that underlies all the others. It's not going to solve everything, but it will go a long way is this dual tax rate that we've been grappling with since 1984. And in that period of time between, uh, what, what are, uh, the statistics that I have is from um, 1984 to 2014, I think it was, or 2016, the shift from the homeowners to business because of the dual tax rate was $650 million. Okay, this is not small change. And it hasn't helped the homeowner anymore any, any, to any degree because the homeowners, because of the decline in the commercial industrial base in the city over those years, the homeowner has had to pick up that 
burden in order to be able to support the tax base. So if you have you know, a certain number of parcels on either side, it has to be, you know, the homeowner pays a certain amount and the, and the, and the uh, business person pays a lot more. So the burden has been shifted to the homeowner, but at the same time, our taxes, residential taxes, on, on homes are higher than they the homes. They would otherwise have been that, that no, if and there was more business. Higher but you don't know than, that there would have been more business. Okay, That's what you don't well, know. if you, let's say it's not the decisive factor, but let me give you an example. You know Lakeway Commons in Shrewsbury that was put up on the former SPAG site. Okay, we've run the numbers on that. That property is worth about $59 million um, in, in um, value. They pay Shrewsbury $728,000 a year. Shrewsbury has a single tax rate, as does everybody else. Uh, Auburn and, and Fitchburg are going in that direction. They have plans to get a single tax rate. That same project in Worcester, they would have been paying $1.3 million in property taxes. Now, you can't tell me that double doesn't make a difference in whether a business decides to set up in Worcester. So what, what, one yep, point, what we right. have to do, Only what we have to do in order to compensate for that is we start in with the TIFs. Okay. So that makes it doubly unfair for the business owner because most of the businesses are not getting All TIFs right, I because get they exist in, Walter. here. Right? Yeah, yeah I, I don't buy that either. Mm -hmm. um, the, the, for, for one thing, if the homeowners are footing the bill now, they would be footing an awful lot more of the bill if it was a single tax rate. So, so that, that argument doesn't Walter, apply. if you want to get your number one issue in, we've got to go now. Number one issue is that, is that if I were elected, is that we have to go back to the time when the city worked for everybody. And, and where everybody felt like they were in it together. This, this was a time right before Reagan started cutting the public schools, cut the Summers World thing. There was a time when, when, and I know this as a musician, when you would see people doing arts in the park and doing things like that, that were from the poorer neighborhoods. And it affected them for a lifetime. I mean, for a lifetime, I still see these people today. And, and all that, all those cutbacks have really hurt particularly the working class and also the underclass, which, which also always is hurt no matter what over the years. As long as, at the same time that our middle class incomes have stayed essentially the same and the people who support this kind of thing have managed to shovel all kinds of money up to the top and all are right. still trying to do Randy, so. Randy, you get the... That's an easy one for me about the single most important thing in Worcester that would have to be done is to, is to improve the public schools. By and large, 100%. How would you do it? Okay, so there, I, I would definitely have a school that you could take an, uh, a, a high achievement, not exam I, mm -hmm. exclusively, but a high achievement high school, number one requirement. Second, after school programs, summer programs, more charter programs, all of these things have to be done. More, more like Worcester Technical High School is a very, very good school. It has to be open at night for people who want to come back and get more education. Our emphasis in this economy where people lose their jobs to automation <coughs> and globalization is we need a more educated populace and is the biggest problem in Worcester that we're not as education. People go to Quinsig and when they go to Quinsig and they go to different places and they don't, and they, they don't come from That's suburban things, they have to all take these courses to, to catch it. up. That's where we have to leave it, but I, I will give a, a very quick plug. Uh, check out, uh, look for Randy and Roberta and their columns in the Telegram and Gazette. Walter, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for joining us right here on Central Mass Chronicles. Thank you.